name is Kays and welcome to another Right Brain tutorial. So I'm going to try to keep this one short and sweet. So something happened to me recently and I started getting errors where my uh, startup disk was getting full. I didn't have any more space. And then I started trying to figure out what might be going on and I realized that what was actually happening is that Houdini was filling up my hard drive, my system hard drive, with a bunch of temp files and cache files that I guess it needed to kind of get my render ready. And if you are like me, then your system hard drive is not the largest hard drive that you have. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to try to figure out a way to change where Houdini was storing all of this cache data and ideally not put it on my internal hard drive, but put it on a different hard drive. All right, I wanted to start by showing you guys where this temp folder is that Houdini puts all these cache files and crash logs and all this kind of stuff. And for Windows users, I'm going to post a link right here, <laughs> right here, uh, that will show you exactly where to navigate to find this particular fo folder on your hard drive. However, for Mac users, it's a little more complicated because the folder happens to be an invisible folder. So the way you can find it is actually by going into the Go button here. Like, let me just kind of open up a Finder window. I'm just going to click on the Go menu and I'm going to say Go to Folder, okay? And under this Go to Folder, I'm going to type forward slash TMP. Okay, and I'm just going to hit go. And what this is going to navigate is towards this, um, as I said, invisible, normally invisible folder. And inside this folder, you will find a Houdini underscore temp file and there's some kind of cache files. This is also, as I said, where you would normally find your crash log or if you, um, you know, crashed your session and couldn't save it in time, Houdini will try to save a file, like a crashed file. So how are we going to change that? I'm going to show you like two different methods to do that. Let's navigate first to our Houdini um, folder. This is where Houdini normally puts the uh, Houdini.env file or your packages and that kind of stuff. Let's look into the 18.0. And let's just open my Houdini.env file. All right, so I opened up the Houdini.env file in BB Edit. Obviously, you can use any text editor of your choice. And the first method I'm gonna show you is really, really simple. All we have to do is just add one line to our Houdini.env file. And that line is going to be Houdini underscore temp underscore dir equal and then what I did is I'm just going to copy and paste the directory where I actually kind of want Houdini now to save all these cache files and temp files and so on and so forth. Mac users, if you're having a hard time figuring out what the directory path to your new folder is, simply open up a new terminal. And once you have the window open, simply drag the folder into the terminal. This is the folder that you want new cache files to be saved at. And this will give you the correct path. And at this point, you can just highlight it and hit Command C to copy. And now it's going to put it in this particular directory. Obviously, if you're on Windows, you might want to choose one of your other drives on your system or maybe an external drive. I recommend using an SSD drive because you do want Houdini to be able to access these cache files fairly rapidly. All right, so the second method I'm going to show you guys involves packages. All right, so I already have a JSON file that I use to configure some things about Houdini and customize certain things. Let me open it up in BB Edit. I'll show you a little bit what's in it. Basically, I have a specific folder that I'm using to store all of my desktops, and then I have another folder that I'm using to store all of my OSL third-party nodes that I can use with 3D Lite. So uh, what we want to do is we want to add the same command that we added in our Houdini.env file, except this time we want to add it into this package. So what I'm going to do is I want to have this set of instructions happen as the very first thing as part of this uh, JSON file. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to tab over. I'm going to hit like the curly Q. And now I'm going to hit enter once more just to keep things nice and neat. I'm going to hit tab once more and I'm going to uh, insert some quotes and I'm going to say Houdini underscore temp underscore dir. OK, so this is the same thing that we typed into the Houdini.env file, except this time we don't want to use an equal sign, but we just want to use a colon. Okay, 
And then the next thing I want to do is I want to type the directory where I want Houdini now to save these temp files, quotes, and I'm just going to paste that right here. Okay. Uh, and we're almost done, but not quite. So after the final quote, I'm going to hit enter once more. Uh, hit delete just to kind of keep everything nice and neat and organized. We also need to add a comma. And the reason for the comma is that as Houdini reads this JSON file, it's going to go through and find this set of instructions. It's going to say, cool, I got it. And then without the comma, it's just going to assume that it's done. And basically, it's not going to read any of these additional instructions that I also wanted to read. Then make sure that you have commas all the way until the very last piece of instruction. All right, that's all I got for today. I hope this quick tip was useful to some of you guys out there. And I'll be back with a more proper tutorial very, very soon, as soon as I got like a little bit of breather, because I've been working on all these other projects that are taking up a lot of my time. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.